hey everybody <clears throat> look i would have uploaded the video last night but honestly i had to take off work yesterday um just because i I had been having trouble swallowing for like three days without pain and I think I just you know it's kind of those seasonal allergies or whatever um, especially because kids are coming to school sick without masks not that the nurses don't have them we just can't force them to wear them and despite the fact that I wear mine I'm picking up the germs okay so yeah it's I mean in addition to the fact that uh, New York City was uh, underwater. Uh, I actually didn't know that when I called out. <laughs> it's like three o'clock in the morning. Um, but anyway, that's why this is late. So I'm gonna do my best. Uh, you might want to have to turn your volume. That's why I have my headphones in to be as close to a small mic as possible. Um, but anyway, love after lockup. Oh, thank you to all of you who have been subscribing to the channel, liking the videos. I really appreciate that. Um, so be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. All right, let's to lock up season five, episode three, the $40,000 felon. All right. Now, Melissa and Louie, <laughs> these people just never fail. Okay. So he's, um, he gets out there in the car. He's talking about how it feels weird being out. Like he doesn't have to actually go back to prison or go back and, you know, kind of explain himself. That's what he keeps thinking. Um, they're having PDA in the car. Meanwhile, Donna is behind them, giving them all the bad vibes, you know, staring daggers in the back of their head. Um, Louie and Donna get into it in the car because his mother is trying to go to probation with him. And she's like, well, you would need me, this, that, and the other, this, that, and the other, right? And at the time, he was like, what the hell are you going to do? What can you, what can you do? I'm 41 years old. And if I can't handle this, then I can't handle, you know, basically anything. And then Melissa was like, yeah, if it's going to be him on his own, now is the time. And Donna was like, I don't need you chiming in. And I was like, Melissa, apparently, maybe you didn't get this lesson or you don't care, but usually you are supposed to stay out of family business like that. It, it's one of the times, not that I'm saying that you weren't trying to help, but that didn't help. Okay. Anyway. Um, so I think Louis doesn't want her to go though. Cause he's going to be asking if he can move to Jersey, <laughs> which we realized later in the episode. So he gets home and he's triggered. He said by the house because, um, uh, from the bad memories when he was having drug deals, come to the house, this, that, and the other. And I can understand that because addicts can't go, um, or former addicts can't go back to their hangouts if they're going to get better and stay better. Even if it's people that had nothing to do with the drugs, things that remind them of those uh, times where they were dependent on the drugs can really trigger them. Um, so maybe the New Jersey thing is not a total loss, but we shall see because, ooh, child. So Melissa, Louie, and Donna are having dinner, right? Together. <laughs> okay. So Donna feels like Melissa is taking away all the attention because Louis brought it up and he said, well, I'm, I'm afraid you might be feeling the way because Melissa's here. And, um, Melissa says, look, you know, I'll only be here a week and you'll have him permanently. Right. No one, she lying. No one, they're going to try to get him to Jersey. Um, so Melissa, now you just looking like a straight <laughs> lie. Shut up. Just shut up, girl. I would be careful. She, I'd be afraid she had poisoned that food. But anyway, so then Louis starts talking about, um, to his mother, well, I mean, Donna admits, she was like, yeah, actually, I do feel like you're taking up all the attention. I was like, Donna, you can't be nice for 10 seconds to this woman. Like, you cannot be, you just refuse. Okay, anyway, so then Louis starts talking about, hey, Ma, this food was great. Can I get it to go play <laughs> to the hotel? Now, mind you, she done had a problem with this hotel stuff from the gate when she's yelling at him like he's 10 years old telling him to get in the car. Um, so Donna says him staying home right now is safer. Okay. She didn't say it as nice as I'm saying it right now, but it is his first night home and a probation officer might come to the house and he's like, you're just paranoid. You're just paranoid. And before she could even say, I was thinking, I was like, well, bruh, you have gotten in a lot of trouble before this. And she was like, before I could even finish the thought, she was like, well, I wonder why. And I was like, yeah, Louie, you're going to have, you're going to have to eat that, bruh. You're going to have to eat it. Um, 
because she reminded him, this is still my house. I was like, Louie, yeah, it's one thing to be a 41-year-old man. It's another thing to be a 41-year-old man with your own shit. Just saying, just saying. All right, I mean, because you're going to have to deal uh, with Papa when you get to Jersey. So don't think you're going to just, just glide all around. Everything's going to be perfect. So she made Louie sleep. <laughs> After she tells him they can't go to the hotel, they need to, and, you know, stay there or whatever. He was like, Louie, you, she was like, Louie, you can sleep in your room. And made Melissa, she gets a pillow and a blanket and tells Melissa, you can sleep here. Right? So they can't even, now, I have her uh, grown parents, and I can understand this. It's still her house. Respect the house. They're not married. I don't have to let them sleep in the same bedroom together. It's still her home. However, my beef is with the blatant disrespect. I know Louis is home, but you're going to make the chick sleep on the couch. Like, come on. Come on. I know you had somewhere just slightly more comfortable, but no, you couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. All right. Your son been on the couch. Trust me, a couch ain't no big deal, but I get it. He home or you could have just let them be grown. But I get it because you don't like her. Anyway, um, so Melissa was like, when the camera comes up to her, she's like, seriously, we've been waiting the whole day for this. We don't care what she says. We're leaving. And I'm like, y'all are seriously talking like some 17-year-olds who are trying to sneak out the house. We don't care what she says. Donna, you're doing the most. All right, moving on. Kirk and Brittany. Y'all know how I feel about them. I think they are both too young. I think they both have untreated, serious untreated trauma. Because uh, people call everything trauma now. But I'm talking about serious untreated trauma based on the way they grew up. And they just don't have, they don't have the tools. So Kirk is complaining about how he's ready to eat. Instead of going to the food, he says, Brittany, can you fix my plate? All right. Red flag number one. What I tell y'all, and I know there's going to be some people who are from more traditional backgrounds who don't think that's a big deal. I, I, while I don't agree with it and always like it, I understand that some people are raised that way and think that's a way to serve your husband. Okay. Anyway, so what I tell y'all, I can tell, see, I see through Kiri. I see through Kiri. I can tell the way him and his brothers grew up. I feel like they grew up with a controlling father, i.e. throwing your son out on the street because he says he's gay. Um, and that's why he feels, and it's still learned behavior. 19 through 25, you have practically grown up in prison. Those are very important developmental years, which is why people go to college. And, and even then, you're still young. You think you know more, but it's part of the development you need into adulthood. But I can tell they grew up with probably a very controlling father. And Kirik, one, that's what he grew up seeing. And as somebody transitioning into being male, and when I say transitioning into being male, what I mean is girls are socialized differently from boys. I know we can wish things were different, whatever. There are certain things girls learn about, you know, wearing certain clothes, a certain time at night. Do I have to think about what's going to happen to me? Do I have to feel like I'm going to be raped? Do I have to feel like I could be beat or taken advantage of if a man's not with all the things that you're taught? Right? So it's, it's, it's the same reason why I think Caitlyn Jenner doesn't, can still act like a white man in a woman's body because that's who she was most of her life. And that entitlement, that racist behavior, it always comes out. So th that's what I mean. The, the socialization, the experiences, those are still there. And I know that's not a conversation, but maybe everybody's not ready to have, but I'm going somewhere with this. So I feel like watching that growing up and then going to prison and being a trans male, Kirik has learned um, that the women in his life need to be controlled. All right, because you could tell by even the way his brothers were so willing to watch Britney for him and people like EB, all these people feeling comfortable enough to control her. And the only person that seems to even give a damn is his mother and who, you know, suffered from breast cancer. And one of the main factors of it is stress. So we don't know what kind of man she was dealing with. 
anyway, anyway, so I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So I feel like Keurig has learned that what men need to do to feel like men is control a woman. And I can't imagine the insecurities that come with growing up in a house where your father didn't accept you for not only not being, I mean, not only being gay, but like, if that's, if that's what it took to just throw you out like that, he was abusive and controlling in other ways. I, I allegedly, I, I believe, no, I believe, and I have, Alle I allege in my mind because um, I feel like people use allegedly in the wrong context public teaching me. but I just mean that's what I'm suspicious of I have no proof I'm not accusing them but I'm saying this is just the way I'm dissecting alright so his mother cooked some good food apparently he was eating like he had lost his mind uh, like when he was in prison and basically he was like I didn't want people coming to ask me for my food if I was hungry or whatever and this is the best food ever. His mother bought him a cigar that he clearly didn't know how to smoke because um, <clears throat> he was choking on it or whatever. They left the cookout to go to the hotel. Now, unlike Donna, Keurig's mother, you know, she was playing, but she wasn't like trying to keep them from actually enjoying themselves. So then Brittany starts talking about how she wished her family was as supportive as Keurig's family. And I can imagine because they do seem like a very supportive family. They do. Um, so anyway, they get back to the hotel and she decorated the room, bought him a wallet and a new watch. And I was observing and I said, Brittany clearly spent a lot of money on him, right? Now this is going through my mind. And then she says, like, you know, three to $4,000 or whatever. He has like designer shoes, whatever. Okay. So while his siblings were talking shit about her saying, well, she comes in late. She does this, that, and the other. And... Uh, while EB is saying, well, I see you when you leave all times of night. What time do you get home? This, that, and the other. Clearly, she was working. She was working, motherfuckers. And maybe if y'all was working that hard, y'all wouldn't have time to be following her everywhere. And she spent it on him. Anyway, so she starts crying about how happy she is. Um, then they take a sip of champagne. Kira, you are showing, honey. Uh that yeah you you definitely went to jail young because the way your face went when you took a sip you didn't take a shot you a sip okay you were like <laughs> you look <laughs> i was like he looked like somebody banged his head on a wooden desk like i can't believe you did that anyway it's it's clearly been a minute so they wake up the next day he's talking about how he feels like a king in the you know hotel bed okay um, she's talking about how happy she is and it just seems like to me I was watching like this is, must be the calm before the storm because that relationship just over the phone was sounded toxic as hell so she's got to take him to the probation office or whatever the PO All right so he's talking to her about you know should we get food this and the other and Brittany was like doing all the extra stuff packing this and the other girl them heels if y'all in the rush but nevertheless um but she's like no I think we just need to get something on the go we got to get there we got to get there and then he starts talking shit about her driving like it wasn't his fault that they were late he's taking his time she's telling him like get up do this we, we have to go you know whatever um he's complaining like he had hair to do or something like he had hair to do like he had a whole outfit he had to put together was it nothing about Kirik giving um this needed to take long no you was laying your lazy happy ass to that bed and you were slow with it. Oh, well. Gosh, like, I, I just don't understand why people don't. Never mind. It don't act like somebody wasn't waking you up in jail either, okay? Um, boy, bye. Anyway, so she's talking about how she was more submissive in their relationship. She was like, but once I'm at that point, I'm at it. I'm a Latina, this, that, and the other. And I was like, girl, that's anybody. Anybody going to get tired of being yelled at and blamed and confused. But okay. So then he calls her from inside the probation office and says to her from the inside and said, why did you bring me to this probation office? She was like, you told me to. He was like, no, I didn't. It's the wrong one. It's any other. See, it's that manipulative shit throwing it her way. First of all, even if she had gotten you the wrong, it's your responsibility. It's your probation. I'm telling you, Kirik, I don't, I don't like you. I don't like you. I was willing to give you a chance, but I think you are controlling. And Brittany, you are too young to be controlled like that. Both of y'all need some psychological work. And that's it. 
All right. So, um, Joy Nomi, I think I'm if I'm not pronouncing it correctly, it's not on purpose. Um, Joy Nomi in red. So she's new to us. Um, she lives in New Mexico. I was like, oh, I've driven through New Mexico, getting out of California though. Um, not much there. Um, and she's Navajo. And she has a black son and she's with a black man. Okay. I was trying to piece it together and then somebody blew up the spot. She did. So the indigenous people are really representing on this show. We had Chris last season and now we have her. I just wish it was another show. Because the indigenous have been uh, victims of genocide for some centuries now in the United States alone. I'm not even talking about all the Americas in the United States alone. I just wish this was another show that we could see into the culture. All right. So, um, cause we know we're not going to get that here. So she asked the little boy if he's ready to have his father come home and he's just silent. Like he seemed like he's happy with him and his mother and I can totally understand. So she's been in contact with this man for years because one of the guys, she, she said she used to talk to guys randomly on Facebook. She's never really had much of a relationship. It's been like more like one night stands or whatever. And she said one of the guys she was talking to on Facebook hooked her up with this guy in prison who's red. And I'm like, okay, so you were talking to him with him and then he gives your number to this other person. In prison. Like, what the fuck? But okay, girl. So the boy is not his son, which I, was explained. She cheated on him. I'm sorry. I don't consider that cheating. Darling, you're in prison. Okay. So to hear you over the prison call saying, I really want to have a sit down dinner with her and talk about why that happened. The boy is four. <laughs> okay. Red, if you can't handle it, maybe you should call your family in Missouri or wherever or whoever your home people, wherever. Just like, don't come home with that shit. Okay. I'm not trying to be mean. Um, I want to say something, but it may come off as insensitive. So I'm going to leave it alone, uh, about the way red looks. Not, and I'm not even, I know somebody's gonna be like, oh yeah, he's not cute. No, that's not what I was going to say. Anyway, so I'm Salah, leave it alone. So she's very self-conscious. She's, she's telling us this, this about seeing red. Um, she was like, well, she's been shy. And I think, you know, maybe but because of her weight to some degree. And I say that just having, you know, being a big girl, like I'm always thinking about that always. And I, I hate that. Um, and I've, I've gotten better with it, but it, it can do that. So I, I just want to say, girl, don't let anybody make you think you can only get a man in prison to get the kind of love that you need. Because, you know, it may just be also like, you know, I just want somebody to love me. But Destiny's Child told us a long time ago in Destiny's Fulfilled album, the grown woman album, I found a new love. I finally found it in God. Girl, don't go to no man trying to find it. Girl, love yourself. All right. And go to God. All right. So her sisters are beautiful. And maybe that's why she's so self-conscious. Um, because I know what it is to be the fat sister. And if you see me beside my sisters, you will really ask, what the fuck happened to that one? Uh, <laughs> okay, that's all right, because you grow up and you get over it. All right, so anyway, so she's crying about, you grow up and get over it and learn how to accept what it is what it is. All right, so she is crying about how she cheated on Red um, while he was in the hole for like six months. You're in the hole for bad behavior. And granted, and we know, I, I'm not aloof. I know how the prison system works in the sense that you can just um, mistreat people, put them in a hole and that kind of thing. However, to come out of the hole, I mean, like you basically disappear to that person who's over the phone. Okay, so the sisters were like, well, he's always in trouble. Does that concern you? And she was like, no, I trust him. And I was like, no, it should concern you, especially when you're in the hole, like multiple times for being violent. Granted, it's with other men. Um, but we've seen this movie before. We've seen this show before. The patterns are very, very similar. Okay. So she's going to pick up red in Missouri. The fuck? That was actually my next stop when I did California to New Mexico, New Mexico to Missouri, Missouri to Cleveland, Cleveland to New York. I, I remember it like it was yesterday because I was relieved from leaving California. 
Anyway, so she's going to pick up bread and was like, um, it's like bringing home a newborn because she doesn't have any shoes or socks or anything. I have to buy everything. And her sister was just like, that's going to be expensive. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. I, but I'm glad they keeping it real with her. So um, she went to the pawn shop. When I saw the pawn shop, my heart sank like, <sighs> darling, you are really about to make some bad decisions. You're really about to make, I, I can already tell, because we all know a pawn shop is just desperation and exploitation. All right, so she went to the pawn shop and sold her family heirlooms to get to Missouri. Like, and her sister was like mad when she saw her giving away. She was like, grandma gave you those bracelets or whatever. And it really hurt my heart watching it because I was like the history of indigenous peoples um and that's also where I am in my curriculum too so all this stuff is like flowing in my mind giving away their stuff for cheap I'm, and I'm just like there's been a whole history of people devaluing what indigenous people had to offer and it being so plentious to them I mean the European idea is the distorted idea, but nevertheless, what I'm saying is some white person is essentially going to come along, walk in that pawn shop. Okay, they're going to give her $500 for it. I can tell you right now that shit is already worth thousands upon thousands. I can tell you that right now. They're going to walk in there, they're going to buy it for a few thousands and then sell it for millions and somebody who owns a museum will buy it and it'll be there and it could have been yours. Some stuff ain't worth it. And damn sure enough, for somebody you never met in person. Golly. Oh, my heart sank. So Brittany and Andy. Brittany and Andy. They do the most and not enough all at the same time. Okay, so Gracie leaves to go and hang with a friend after the party. I don't blame her. Your mother has inflicted enough trauma on you for a 24 hour period. All right, so she has said, she said her son was happy to see her at her birthday party. And I was like, bitch, and you've just left that boy again? Right, okay. So then she comes out of the party and starts being manipulative and basically saying, I mean, I, I don't really, I mean, you're tired, aren't you? Like, let's just go to a hotel and sleep instead of going home. And so he was like, okay, well, I was kind of planning on going home tonight. And she was like, so you should book a hotel. I was like, first of all, that's money, okay? And the presumption around my money, uh, slow your roll, okay? His son is sitting back there like, I have manners, but what the fuck, right? Like, I'm not going to say anything, but. So she laughed at the fact that they were outside for two hours. She was like, yeah, so what did you guys do? For two hours, yeah, that's a long time. Bitch, are you for real? Andy, you should have left her ass. Fuck them cameras, fuck everything. So when he goes inside to get the hotel room, she starts talking to Barry, that's the, the boy, I think that's his name, um, about how his sisters are resistant to meeting her. She was like, um, but look, I'm not here to do any harm with them. That was in my old life or whatever. And I was like, well, bitch, you didn't let your kids miss them? Like, what the fuck? Like, why are you talking to him about this? Why are you talking about this? You don't have to do any harm to them. You just did harm to your kids by coming in their life and just leaving. So her expectations of people are unbelievable. And she has no job, no real relationship with her kids because she's been in jail on drugs and then expects Andy to just have money for two hotel rooms. She's not sleeping with this man. He sent you money, brought that boy a cake that he baked, which I would have never done, um, and was even invited and wasn't even invited in. Fuck you. You should be apologizing and thanking him for being so gracious. She is a manipulative narcissist, allegedly, okay? This is my armchair psychology. All right, and I don't think for a second that those other kids don't resent her. One, we don't get to talk to them kids because they was in there. Two, I'm sure they are happy to see her, right? It's the initial feeling of somebody who's been gone from your life, a mother at that. Um, but after she settles in, they will start uh, telling her exactly what they think about her. And it's not going to be nice. And she's not nice at all to anybody. And I am hating her a lot more each episode. I don't like it. 
She lacks compassion. I don't like it. So, um, Brittany calls the last night weird. They're interviewing them the next day in the hotel. And they asked Andy where they intimate, and Andy was like, no, we were not. And Andy says, it was off-putting, right? Like, he's endured that all day. And it wasn't like he wasn't talking to her like that on the phone. But Andy, when she laughed at you for saying you're going to buy lingerie, that should have told you she didn't really want to fuck with you like that. But at the same time, if that's the case, then she shouldn't be fucking with you like that. All right, so this is what I mean. They do too much and not enough at the same time. So she said she's dealing with um, a lot. I was like, bitch, we all are. And the last thing she needs is his extraness. Bitch, you're using the phone he bought you. <laughs> you're acting weird. This man has driven you around, bought your kids stuff, giving you money, and you're calling him extra for wanting to have sex with you. I'm not saying he can force you, but I'm just saying, like, bitch. Then Gracie calls, and I knew it. I had said this before. This came up on the episode, though. Gracie called, and she asked her, you know, like, she was like, so where are you? Where are you going? And she basically goes, oh, well, I'm at the hotel, but we're going to Rome. Then Gracie called her in the most predictable way to me, because I knew this had to be coming, and is crying and angry with her failure as a mother. Now, we've all, we all know parents are not perfect, okay? We all know that is like a difficult thing to do to raise people. But there are some people who just do the worst job. And Brittany, and I'm not even saying that because she struggles with addiction and things like that, because people do struggle with that. I'm saying because Brittany takes no responsibility and she's manipulative as fuck, which says to me she's still the same person. Okay? So she's triggered her daughter by blaming her the day before about not having things done, about not doing this, like, like Gracie's the mother. She has failed that oldest girl bad. I mean bad. And she has essentially had to take the role of a parent for her own mother. Gracie is basically playing parent to Brittany. How do you think that's fair? So her mother was like, well, she was like, well, I'm upset. She was like, well, okay, well, when you're unupset, bitch, don't get me started on that. Call me and we can have like a girl's day. And I was like, bitch, are you seriously acting like you didn't treat her like shit the day before? And you can tell when that girl broke down and cried and was like, well, I don't want you to think I'm following you around or whatever. I just, you know, missed you. And she had no compassion for that at all. None. And when I saw that, I was like, this bitch is a whole nother level. Like, I am sorry, she is armchair once again. A narcissist. She made herself the victim after Gracie's call and started talking to the camera crew about how her mother and family just waiting for her to fail. And I just think this, that, and the other. It became about her over and over again. It's not about her behavior or things she's done that might make your family upset with you, especially they take on your responsibilities. Nah, bitch, you failed multiple times and your family doesn't trust you. Once again, she managed to make it all about her. Brittany, I don't like you at all. You add to the long list of Brittany's, and I don't know if I've told y'all this before, I probably have, that I have never liked since I was a kid. And I know people can't help their name, but I have just not had a good history with people named Brittany. All right? And Brittany, you making it worse. Worse. Worse, sir. So Chelsea and Mikey. She's finally going to pick up Mikey, even from last season. So she gets to the hotel, she checks in. And when I saw her doing FaceTime with sign language, all I could think was, wow, this is really an amazing feat in the world of technology when you think about it. Think of all um, the deaf and mute people who couldn't communicate like this at all prior to this, you know, last 15, 20 years. Or how expensive it must have been to even communicate at all. You get lost. People can't help you. People take advantage of you. And I told y'all last week, just in doing the training that we have to do every school year or whatever, that the, the highest number of sexual assault, molestation cases, even for children under 18, um, tend to be people who have handicaps. Um, so it's just like, I believe her when she says she's been taken advantage of, but I just think about all the people before her who didn't even have access to technology, 
like that. Gosh, this has to be a real game changer. Um, so she's nervous because, oh yeah, yeah. She's saying that if her kids don't like him, it's a no-go. And I was like, Chelsea girl, you may have wanted to deal with that aspect sooner. Um, so she's nervous because like before you started dating an inmate. Okay. So she's nervous because she has had previous relationships with men who take advantage of her. And it seems like to some degree she implied, um, she may have felt pressured or even sexually assaulted sexually when she said sex scares her and that she felt pressure by men and that kind of thing. So she said she doesn't know why Mikey was attracted to her. And, you know, she obviously has some self-esteem issues and I can understand that. I can understand that. Um, I mean, I appreciate her transparency to that degree because everybody's not willing to say things like that. And I can imagine that it's scary being, you know, but dating an inmate should scare you more, Chelsea, if we're going to keep it real. So uh, she picks Mikey up. She's crying. I kind of like the purple in her hair. Sometimes that kind of shit annoys me, but it looks nice on her. Okay, so he brings these boxes from prison that look like TV boxes. Okay, so I'm still looking in the corner. Um, he seems nice enough, but what kind of prison was he in that he brought a whole ass keyboard box out? Like, did he get some of the stuff back that he stole? Where is the restitution? Like, I'm trying to figure it out. Because remember when we had that other Britney, speaking of which, the one that was in Texas with the money and then I think his name was Ray. Remember, he had to pay all that money back for restitution. Okay, stick a pin there. So this white guy got a 16-year sentence. He stole a car, all this stuff, and only had to serve four years. And then paroled six and a half, and he got a 16-year sentence. So 16 years, he only served four years, and now has to be on parole for six and a half. If they don't get that dismissed. Black people don't get those kind of deals. And that's what I was thinking, like, I know people, know about people, read about people that would never get these deals as black people, men or women. And that shit pissed me off. So he wanted her phone. He was like, so he can type so she can read. And she was like, I, like, I can read lips well. So just talk. And I was like, yeah, most deaf people do that very well. Because that's the way they had to learn because they couldn't hear. Um, so, yeah, they usually have that ability and it's just like losing some of your senses makes the other one stronger so you pick up on different things <sighs> we have now come to the moment <laughs> Renika and Asante well Renika and her homegirl in the PI because to say Renika and Asante at this point just seems like a, a read all right so she said she told the PI they saw the you know a little restaurant table and she told the PR, she said, look, call auntie, right? Stop calling him auntie, because at this point, this is his girlfriend. And just because she, like, 10 years older than you, that woman is not old, but she ain't on TV looking stupid like you. So he calls, like, he's the concierge at a hotel. Um, the woman confirms her name, and he starts asking, like, he was like, oh, yeah, do you, do you need anything? She's like, yeah, some washcloths and towels for two people, this and the other. So the PI said that he knows a way um uh, that Renika can revoke the bond and she wants to do that and get her three thousand dollars back now i'm glad he brought that up because i didn't know people could do that i mean you know um but all of that baby girl is not your money but i don't expect you to get this bitch back money after y'all had this kind of fight but take that and take your ass back to louisville okay please don't stay in atlanta it is not your home it is not your home. It is not your home. Then she was like, well, I mean, he was like, is there anything else you want to know? And she was like, is he even from Atlanta? And he was like, well, North Georgia. And she was like, well, that's Fulton County, right? And he was like, no, that's in the mountains. Now, people say they're from Atlanta all the time. Um, sometimes because it just helps to make sense to people out of the state, right? Because people don't usually know much about Georgia outside of Atlanta. <laughs> like, they don't really know or care um but the mountains are actually a whole nother thing and i'm thinking like mountains like blue ridge wh whatever but up further north um which is way way away from the city that'd be like probably a two-hour drive but clearly he's in the city now um so then he says he can go to the hotel and confirm but she's gonna have to wait he was like look you can't be jumping in the cars and start trying to fight somebody i can't we can't have that right so then we get the friend, I think, I forget what her name is, Ray or something like that. Then we get the friend who hired the damn PI and she's in the interview 
and she's like look i don't want nothing to do with this messy ass shit um and i was like but bitch you encouraged all of this you didn't have to bring this pi you should have told her it looks like he ran out on you you could have come over there to check on her helped her pack up the few things she unpacked and helped send her back to louisville none of this or have found out how to get that bond back and went back to louisville like this like you can't beef it up and then like leave and then just be like acting like she you know did this without some encouragement all right so anyway the pi is doing his job um but clearly he's not used to being on tv but this will get him some additional customers so because he's answering the producer's questions like he has to answer them all anyway so well auntie um got in his ass via text and was like i told you what you wanted to hear that's where i was um because i knew what you were doing i was like oops gotcha bitch uh then Renika's dumb ass starts running from the back like like running like like on the playground kind of energy run to tell the producer she was on the phone with asante now to have a conversation with asante so make sure the producers know to come over there and record her conversation with asante Renika, Renika, Renika. so then she's cursing him out on the phone okay about how she sacrificed her whole life for him and you can't even do what i asked you to do yes yes you're right you sacrificed your whole life for him which is dumb as fuck no he can't do what you asked him to do because now this should be sinking in you got got and i know it sucks to get got but cut your losses okay so she's cursing him out over the phone and his phone he hangs up on her only for her to call him back okay um and she's yelling at him and he told her look i've been trying to get my license and this and the other and she was like yo life you knew you had to get your life when you were <laughs> when you was in jail all this time and he was like no 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 my license like <laughs> and social security card and she was like what the fuck what does that have to do with anything and i was like that's kind of a sophisticated response even for you asante god rest his soul and like i said i'm only commenting on this based on what i see i'm not trying to be insensitive to anybody's loss um just like i wouldn't watch the show and wish you know something terrible you know happened to anybody um but i do want to make sure that's clear because i i'm just commenting on what i see so then he's telling her she's on some goofy shit um she hang like i said he hangs up she calls him back and she says she doesn't care i don't care he hung up i don't care but did you call him back girl this is like high school shit only for her phone to die and then getting and only for her to get in the car with a pi to go and figure out where he is for somebody who don't care for somebody who said well you got caught he didn't get caught caught how he doesn't care you're even referring to auntie as his girlfriend he's not a kid right like you can't say oh you caught now now what now what he's a grown man speaking of kids uh you should go and get yours because they were strangers at this point and you chasing some man around and they at a new school have you checked on them have you made sure they're adjusting of course they're not but i can tell you what then they got on the phones and called their grandma and told them how bad it's going and I wouldn't be surprised she show up to come get them kids. I hope so. But anyway, y'all have a good rest of your day. Um, I'll try to see y'all back for Love and Marriage Huntsville. It's just that, <coughs> excuse me, um, but I had some tea before I got on. But that's, that's why it's taking me a second. All right, but I'll see y'all soon. Later.